Hello Year 6, today I'm going to read Chapter 3 called Diamond Dogs. Gentlemen, the train guard appeared. I'll be blowing my whistle in seven minutes. Thank you, Graham, Uncle Nat saluted. A lightning storm of cameras flash, flashes blinded Hal as they hurried along back along the platform. Standing on the red carpet was a silver-haired woman in a Robin Hood hat garnished with a long pheasant feather. An astonishing number of pearl necklaces hung around her neck, draping over her tweed hunting jacket. She moved her glove hand in a circular motion, giving the paparazzi a steely smile. Keep up, Uncle Nat called as he stepped up into the dining car, car, car passing his coat and umbrella to the head steward. Hal walked back to the train, unable to take his eyes off the five fluffy white dogs with diamond studded collars behind the silver haired lady. A red faced man with a mousy brown fringe was clinging to their leads, trying to control them. Hal loved dogs. Every birthday and Christmas he begged for one, but his parents always refused. They said dogs were expensive and a big responsibility. When they told him he was going to have a little sister, he asked how they could afford an, another human, especially since children were an even bigger responsibility than a dog. He hadn't meant to be rude, but he found himself being sent to his room anyway. Stepping into the dining car was like stepping back in time. Neatly, neat dining tables draped with white linen tablecloths and flanked with high-backed armchairs were set on opposite sides of the aisle. Like a curious narrow restaurant, the air was heavy with furniture polish. What's so interesting? Uncle Nat asked. Hal pointed out of the window. Imagine being rich enough to have five dogs. That's the Countess of Arundel, Lady Elizabeth Lansbury, one of the wealthiest women in England. I met her recently at the Duchess of Kent's Gala, a very impressive woman. Do you think she'll bring her dogs on the train? I hope she doesn't. I'm allergic, said her voice. Ernest White, Uncle Nat crossed the carriage and grasped the hand of an old man wearing a grey wool suit. He was sat at one of the tables reading a newspaper through half-moon spectacles. What a treat to see you. Always a pleasure, young Nathaniel. Quite the commotion out there, isn't it? Ernest White looked over his spectacles at Hal. Is this your boy? My nephew, Harrison. I have a grandson called Hal. Ernest shook Hans Hal hand. He works on the Cal Caledonian sleeper. Son of my youngest daughter, she drives freight trains up in Scotland. I didn't realise you'd be joining the Royal Tour, Ernest. Not working, I hope. Uncle Nat sat into the armchair opposite him. Lord no, too old now. Ernest looked over at Hal. I was the head steward, steward on the Royal Train for 47 years, he sighed. Some of the happiest moments of my life took place on this train. They knew I wanted to say goodbye to her. I was so pleased when I got the invitation. The old man's eyes filled up. It means a lot. Not wanting to stare, Hal looked down at Ernest White's newspaper. Can you see the article? Thief strikes again. Priceless ruby ring stolen at charity benefit gala. Baroness of Kent offers £10,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. There was a fuss behind him as Lady Lansbury swept into the dining car. Ghastly people, she threw her hands in the air. One photograph is never enough for those beasts. She disappeared through the door at the other end of the carriage, abandoning the man with her dogs who were struggling to get them all on the, to the train. They're lovely dogs, Hal said excitedly, holding out his hand to the closest one who promptly licked it. The dog's fluffy white tails wagged as they poked their noses into the carriage corners, seeking interesting smells. The dog handler cursed as she was pulled in diff as he was pulled in different directions. Hal tried to help, pulling one out from under a table. It jumped up and licked his face. Heel, shouted the dog handler, and the dog scrambled back to him. He herded them through the carriage door following Lady Lansbury. I wonder what their names are, Hal said. Baron Wolfgang Ash Essenbach. 
Ernest White said, and his youngest son, Milo. Hal thought the old man had meant the dogs until an imposing gentleman with grey street black hair wearing a midnight blue waistcoat stepped onto the train. Behind him was a tall, glowering figure, all elbows and shoulders. Gordon Gould welcomed the two men, ushering them in the direction of the observation car. The Baron is an old friend of His Royal Highness, the Prince, Ernest White whispered, and a great rail enthusiast. Hal recognised the next guest. Stephen Pickle was a rich entrepreneur who ran a train company called Grailax, but he was famous for being on reality TV programme. Clinging to his arm was a curvaceous red-haired woman with a fake tan that Hal supposed must be his wife. Reaching into his pocket, he toyed with his pen. He was itching to draw them. Stephen Pickle's skin looked like sausage meat. He had bangers for arms and chipolata fingers. I don't believe it, Ernest White hissed. Who's invited those parasites? Evening, Stephen Pickle greeted them with a nod. Not bad for an antique, is it? His beady eyes flickered about the carriage. Could do with modernising. Uncle Nat placed a restraining hand on Ernest's arm. I'm Lydia Pickle, his wife smiled generously, her red lips lifting like a theatre curtain to reveal ultra white cap teeth. Nice to meet you. Mr Pickle's mobile rang. He pulled it from his pocket and shouted into the phone. Hello? No, I'm busy. Call me back. Lovely to meet you, Lydia, Uncle Nat replied, shaking her hand as she fluttered her false eyelashes at him. I'm Nathaniel Bradshaw and this is my nephew, Harrison. Gordon Gold shut the double doors of the dining car, dropping a brass bar across them. The piercing sound of a whistle made them all look up. Thirty-four minutes past, said Ernest White, checking his watch and tutting. Four minutes behind schedule already. Hal felt a jolt and a thrill as the train began to move. The photographers on the platform surged towards them. Quick, Harrison, Uncle Nat rose. Let's go to the observation car and wave goodbye to King's Cross. And that's the end of chapter three. Chapter four, which I'll read tomorrow, is called A Grand Departure. Goodbye.